Bob Leonard here. I'm here to show you how the frugal vacuum truck works. What we do is give you all the parts pieces so you can make your own vacuum trucking device. Uh, in so doing, you're going to save half the cost. Uh, it's going to be half the cost of a air venturi system, which requires a heavy-duty air compressor to, uh, to create the vacuum. Uh, or one-fifth the cost of the fancy aluminum chucks and the high-end uh, uh, pumps that, uh, that are used. And I'll explain more about that later. But let's get into it. We've turned the inside of our bowl and uh, we'd like to uh, finish the foot on the back side to make a pleasing form. Uh, maybe similar to this. Maybe similar to whatever your own design aspirations are. Ways of doing it, are to, of course, is to use a jam chuck to hold it while you're holding it with the center point. Um, other ways are using cold jaws, um, which can be very, very time consuming and uh, your piece can pop off, very, uh, very readily pop off uh, if you're not tightened and secured properly. By using a vacuum trucking device, your setup time is greatly, greatly reduced. Uh, what I have here is a block of wood that we supply, PVC chuck, and a foam gasket, uh, and I'll tell you more about the foam gasket later. Uh, we have a through tube here. We have a bearing that's uh, on the interior here. So literally, our chuck turns, our rod stays stationary in the headstock. We eliminate the potential of vacuum leaks in the headstock. Very fast, very easy. I've taken off my four, four jaw chuck. All we have to do, we don't need any special fittings or anything, is attach our, our vacuum hose here. The fact that it's a vacuum, uh, we'll pull that down tight against uh, that thread there and we'll achieve full vacuum. I'm going to turn the pump on just to show you what we have. We're open now, we don't have any vacuum. If I block my finger on that true rod, we're pulling 27 inches of vacuum right now. We have the option while we're turning, if we have a very thin piece, so we can modulate the pressure vacuum. By turning our gate valve right here. And we have a good way to check that we don't have any leaks in the system. Uh, if you have a very coarse piece of wood, it may not hold at all. You need a a dense uh, wood or a heavy finish on there in some cases. I'm going to turn this off. If when you formed your uh, your bowl you end up with a uh, registration mark, a dimple, uh, a point or whatever, you're a little bit ahead, you can bring up your uh, your steady rest, put it against the gasket on the chuck. Uh, we can turn on the uh, we can turn on the vacuum right now. And if you look at the vacuum gauge, you can see where we're pulling. The same vacuum. We got a nice dense piece of ash here. This is just a, a demo piece. I did the turn to the bottom here, so I glued this on here just so I had enough stock to show you what I'm doing <coughs> for multiple demos. Pull up our, uh, our tool rest. Uh, we'll turn. We can bring it up to speed. Uh, at this point, we have any one of my pumps uh, with that four inch coupler that is applied. We have over 150 pounds of atmospheric pressure holding that against that coupler. It would take a major, major catch in order to pop it loose uh, compared to cold jaws and other means of attachment. You know, at this point, the advice taken. Uh, Careful cuts to begin with, uh, 
uh, shallow cuts to begin with and be more aggressive. You can also leave your tailstock attached until you feel comfortable that this isn't going to pop off. Uh, my piece right here has uh, been sitting in the shop here for quite a while. Uh, and it has dried since I originally turned it, so it is badly out of round. Uh, but still we have enough material here to, uh, to go ahead. If we didn't have a registration point like I originally tried to center this with, if we use our, uh, if we use our tool rest as a registration point, we can bleed off vacuum. When I bleed off vacuum, we don't have as much moment on here. We just have a tender grip on here. At this point, I can, I can tap. Back over here. We can, we can this. Uh, we'll never get a perfectly round, but we can get a good enough that we can work with. And we can go back to work. People ask what happens. Uh, what happens? Uh, electricity goes uh, goes off. Let me just turn it, turn this on. Electricity goes off. Is uh, the vacuum going to immediately disappear? Is it going to go flying across the room? Well, let's simulate electricity going off. There we are. We got a thanks to real good reed valves inside of here. We got a very very slow leak down. We still got our, our 150 pounds holding that on there. In fact, I'm probably going to be. Uh, <laughs> this isn't moving at all. Uh, this isn't bleeding off at all. So I'm going to bleed off the vacuum. There we go. Advantages of the system you'll never get that uh, natural edge uh, bowl to, uh, to be caught with a uh, cold jaws which you definitely can uh, catch with a vacuum chuck. I press it in there to get it. Um, you know, we could finish, and I can also pad my varnish on there. And I can walk away and let it dry and come back and put multiple coats on. I can sand. Um, let's say we got this all finished. And we notice that we have a, uh, a boo-boo on the inside. Well, we can reverse suck it. Now I could, uh, I could re-sand. I could also, uh, once again, pat on my Finish. Uh, a lot of alternatives uh, to using this over normal ways of attaching. And that's it for here.